Hello everybody, Mike Tenney here at the Tenney School. We are here for Tenney vlog number two today. And uh, what we're trying to do here with this uh, video blog series is to provide useful information for parents and educators to learn more about ways that they can help their students and children perform better academically. And for today's vlog, I'm excited that we have our very own Carolyn John Antonio here to join us. And I'm excited about our topic today. We're gonna be talking about the different varieties of courses you can take in high school to earn college credit. Um, before we get into that, Karen, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so people will know why we've invited you to help us tackle this topic. That is a good question, why? Well, I think probably because I've been teaching AP for 22 years and I've taught for 29 years total. So I've run into all three situations a few times. Okay, sounds good. And Carolyn is our English department chair here at the Tenney School. Um, so she's got a lot of uh, great expertise. She also teaches at the community college level. Um, so she's got some additional experience and perspectives that not every teacher has. Um, so let's get right into it and let's talk about uh, the first type of high school credit, uh, course that you'll run into is uh, advanced placement. So tell me who runs advanced placement program? That is not a mystery because it's the college board, the same people who do the educational testing service, the SAT, the ACT prep, so they know what they're doing, they're very experienced, and they run the entire program. Okay, so I think college board does PSAT, mm -hmm. SAT, and ACT. then any advanced mm -hmm. placement programs mm -hmm. are, are run through the college board. Um, if you take an AP class, how do you earn, how do you actually earn college credit? Well, you get graded on a scale from one to five. Many colleges take a three, a few colleges take a four, and if it's really some upper tier or some specialized colleges, they only take a five. So it absolutely depends on each individual college. So you'll have to check with each college you're interested in to see what the minimum score is that they'll accept. So it may vary by university. Uh, it also may vary by college in that university. Absolutely. So if you're taking like an English mm -hmm. class and you're they an English major, sure. you may have to get a higher score on the on the Absolutely. Uh, on the test. Yeah. And by the way, so when we said score, that's uh, you take a test at the end right. of the year that is graded by the college they, board. Yes, they provide okay. all the training and all the expertise on that and it's very, very regimented, very statistically accurate, so whatever score the uh, student earns, you can really bank on that is the score. Okay. They're very, very good at that. And it's given, the score is given by the college board, not by the right. school. So Absolutely th the not. school that you're taking the class at doesn't really have a play into mm -hmm. what score you get on the AP exam. Right. And that's why it's so trustworthy, because it's so nationalized and it's so precise that you can really believe what that score is. And you were telling me that you've actually graded the AP exam, and where did, where did you go to do that? I did that in Florida one year. It's okay. a really amazing experience, though I ended up with a lot of knowledge and literally a crick in my neck that I had to go to a doctor for, because you grade nonstop for, for 10 days. Okay, all right, very interesting. So uh, we've actually bled into the next question a little bit. So our, the, the question I was going to ask following that was who will recognize credits from advanced placement uh, courses? Yeah, um, almost, uh, as I said, many colleges will. There are very, very few who won't, uh, that they want their own program and you start as a freshman where they tell you to start. But generally, you can um, place out of a lot of credits in college and you can start if, if you're really good at all those things, you could start as a sophomore okay. in many colleges. So okay. most places recognize AP. Okay, and then the final question for each uh, topic we're gonna ask is, what types of high schools run advanced placement courses? Uh, most high schools in the U.S. I think run them, private and as well as public, because it's, it's recognized as a really good program. Okay, all right, sounds good. So that's advanced placement. Um, which I think I would say is the most common uh, type of college class that you'll run into in high school. Uh, if we're going to follow that up with International Baccalaureate, which I think is the least Absolutely. common uh, course that you'll see at the high school level here in America. Tell me who runs International Baccalaureate? Well, as I understand, it's, it's started in Switzerland, so it's run by foreign, by the, by the Swiss um, who, again, they'll have a very stringent set of rules and regulations on what you do and how you do it. So it's very standardized within their program. Okay, uh, so how do you earn credit after taking an international baccalaureate class? 
Um, well, uh, you're graded on a one to seven scale. And again, um, they, they are in charge of that, but you can get both a dip, dip, uh, yeah, diploma and a certificate. So okay. it's depending. If you want to do the entire program, you would get a diploma, the two years. Uh, otherwise, you would pick and choose courses and get a certificate. Okay. which is still recognized by um, some colleges. Okay, so this is an important distinction that we've learned together about the IB. So there you have IB diploma schools, and those schools, uh, to get an IB diploma, you have to take all six possible mm -hmm. IB uh, college courses, and you have to score well enough on all six exams okay. to be awarded the IB diploma. Some schools will also allow you to take individual IB courses, and you can, like the AP, you can get a uh, credit for that one course and not earn an IB diploma, but get some IB coursework done, mm -hmm. which uh, obviously translates into some uh, college credits if you do well enough on the, uh, the exam. Who will recognize credits from the IB? Uh, they're a little more, um, it's more difficult to find schools that will there because it's such um, a lesser known uh, entity than, than AP or dual credit. So, uh, not as many schools do, but international schools, um, by and large, you'll find it more there than you do here in the U.S. Okay, so I think that's a good trade-off to highlight. So, mm -hmm. uh, so if you're planning to study in Europe, IB classes may actually be more uh, well known and recognized. Mm -hmm. If you're planning to study in America, advanced placement, and I will say, having done some college placement work myself, the IB is becoming much more well known and accepted. Um, and uh, so there are a lot of uh, U.S. colleges that are much more aware of it than they were, say, 10 years ago, but it's still kind of the, the up-and-comer in the, the world of mm -hmm. college classes at the high school level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the whole, almost all high schools in Houston are going to run an AP. There's really only about 10 high schools in Houston right now that are running IB programs, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of split between uh, uh, between private and public, um, which kind of bleeds us into that last program. What types of high schools run these courses? Oh, I would say ones with a lot of international students okay. and ones um, with, with kids who are really, really motivated, who want that extra designation on their, um, on their, their um, diploma, diploma mm -hmm. registrar, yeah, that the registrar can put IB in okay. there. So yeah, it's, it's an honor. It's okay. really an honor to do that. So here in Houston, where, where we live, uh, the, the private international schools mm -hmm. are the ones that run the IB courses here. And then uh, some of the, the public schools, like the ones that have maybe a language, a foreign language bent, right. they yeah. might be more yeah. likely to sure. run IB classes. Um, but there's also a couple that have picked IB as uh, their magnet um, focus or their charter focus. Um, so there's, there's several different variants and things that you could see. Uh, that I've learned about. Um, okay, so we've covered the AP and the IB. The last one we want to talk about was dual credit. Mm -hmm. Who runs the dual credit program? That's run by the individual community colleges, usually HCC or Lone Star. And it, it's a tremendous program too. It's really, really good for a lot of kids who just want to get the, that two years in one to take the course, get it over with, and then get accepted into a college without having to take the basic uh, first levels of that course. Okay. So it's a good deal for them. Okay, and one of the, th the things that makes I, uh, dual credit unique or stand out from the AP and the IB is the requirement that they have right. for the instructor. Can you describe that for us a yeah, little bit? Yeah, the instructors don't have any leeway at all. It's designated by the college. The c college controls it, tells you, uh, in the case of English, how many papers to write, how many words to write. And so it's uh, really kind of taken out of the instructor's hands. But again, that standardizes things, make sure that you really know what you're doing once you get into college. So it, it works both ways. And the, the, so what I read was that the teacher also has to be, um, they have to have a master's, master's. degree in what mm -hmm. they're taking. So in you can exactly. teach uh, dual credit or IB I'm sorry, AP no, or IB without, without a master's right. degree, but to be a dual credit teacher, you have to have a master's degree. In, in the subject, that, that you can't teaching. just have a master's of education. You have to have a master's in that subject. Okay. Yep. Um, so how do you earn credit from, from a... Um, that's, in a sense, maybe easier. I'm not sure how, how you look at it, but as long as you pass the course that the instructor has taught you during your high school year, then you automatically um, 
get credit for that. So there's no taking a big exam at the end. There's no how many points, a scale. There's just you passed everything, you turned everything in, you're in. Okay, that's good to know. And who will recognize credits from a dual credit class? Mostly in, col in uh, Texas, it's the public colleges and universities. Uh, some private ones do, some don't. And there are a few out-of-state universities that do too. It, again, it all depends. So as a parent, you really, really need to do your own homework, check with each college that your student is considering, and talk with that person at the college and say, do you accept this, don't you accept this? So before you make these kinds of decisions, you really need to get more information, not f just from what we said, but from each individual college. Sure. That's the place to go. Sure. Yeah, I know, I remember when I was in college and my friends uh, who were transferring from school to school, mm -hmm. they would have issues with which credits transferred right. and not. Right. And this is what happened, this is the situation you're really in yeah. when you're taking a dual Absolutely. credit class. You're actually transferring from a community college to another yeah, school, right. and now the question is, well, does that school that you're transferring to recognize mm -hmm. the credits from a prior college? Right. In this case, a community college in Houston, mm -hmm. Texas. So, and some places will and some places won't. Right. Um, yes. Because it's a local community college, you may not be able to transfer that credit out of state or to private right. schools, um, but you're, uh, it's required that in-state schools um, so Texas state mm -hmm. schools will sure. automatically have to accept yep. any credits that you earn from the Texas right. community college. Right, so you college. don't have to check with them because that's a given. That's a given, okay. Right. Um, there was something else I was that, that was an, a unique twist to the dual credit, um, but I can't remember now when it was mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Um, um, what types of schools so run the dual credit classes? Um, oh, both public. Uh, I think it's mostly public school. There's a, um, a limitation, certain limitations that lend itself better to public schools. But most schools here in Houston, I think a lot of schools have them. I think they do. Schools. Some of them run dual credit in private and public. Mm -hmm. And um, so interestingly, I'd also say that I, I've read that you can take a course that is both dual credit and AP. Uh, I think so. That I I think that's kind of unusual, but you probably can. Okay. So you and and well, and with the AP test, you can take it. You don't have to take the AP course to take the AP test. Right. So, kind of by definition, you could take dual credit and still take the Sit AP test. Sit for the test. AP exam, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. your right. standing there would be determined on your score. Right. Um, and I did. I there was a little twist with the IB and the AP that I read about. Oh yeah. What was that? Um, that the you can take the AP test if you're taking the IB program. You cannot take the IB, you cannot get a, an IB certificate through taking the AP program. Okay, so if you so have, if you wanted to try to do both an AP and an IB, you need right. to find an IB class and then sit for the AP right. exam to try to get both if that's your goal. Yes. Uh, but you can't do it the other way around. Nope. Okay. Um, so is there anything else in your research that you thought you might share here? I think I'm pretty well tapped. Well, the thing, well, here at this school we're all about individualization. I mean it really is, it comes down to you and your students. So you make the best choice, you do your homework, and you go with the place that meets the needs that, um, of, that your student has. And that's the best, that's what we try to do here, and I think that's the best for all parents to do. Do your homework, find the best one that suits you. Yes, and I guess for uh, clarity, at the Tenney School, we teach AP classes, mm -hmm. so that's the that's the program that we believe is best for us and our students. Um, but it may not be the one that's best for for every mm -hmm. school and every student. So do your research, and as usual, if you have any questions for us, look us up on the web www.tennyschool.com or give us a call. We'd love to have you come out and tour our school. I hope that you found this uh, discussion on college courses in high school helpful, and we will see you next time. <laughs>